Broadway Con, are you ready? Please welcome to stage Be More Show producer and theater historian Jennifer Ashley Tepper. See if this uh, if this is uh, interesting to you. And so I read I read it and I was immediately like, oh my gosh, this should be a musical. I so responded to the characters. I responded to uh, this idea of a, a story about teenagers that's actually about uh, everyone, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, we were sort of off and running after that. And I have been a fan of Joe Trace's work. Uh, we had never met. We were mutual fans. Yes, mutual fans. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Chris. Uh, and so, um, and so, it felt like, oh, Joe Trace, if he was into this, would be a cool person to write this with. Um, and then, and it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and so then, I got involved when um, uh, they were working at Two River Theater. Um, <laughs> Uh, which is a pretty magical place. Um, uh, and when I uh, got my hands on the script and read it, I was like, a like, amazing, beautiful, earnest story told through the lens of sci-fi. I was like, yes, please. <laughs> so like, I went in and I pitched for it, and um, we had a really nice meeting where it felt like we were kind of on the same page in terms of uh, what we thought the show might look like, what we wanted it to feel like, um, uh, and luckily they were like, yeah, let's do this, and so that's how I got involved. For our company members who were part of the show at Two River, what was that experience like? Um, and also, how did you feel when it ended? Did you feel like it would move on after that? Um, so two-part question for you guys. I, um, I, it's still to this day, like it's such a highlight of my life creatively. I got to, uh, was, I've been such a, an admirer of Joe's, uh, uh, Joe Iconis for such a long time. It was the first collaboration with Joe Trace and Stephen Brackett. We did the Lightning Thief together. Uh, the and so it was like this dream summer, and you know we all had huge hopes for the show because we loved it so much. There was so there's just so much heart in, in what these two guys have written and in what this guy has assembled, and uh, and and so we uh, we all really were hopeful for something, and and it kind of didn't happen, but we got a chance to record this album that all of you found on the internet and shared with your friends. Uh, and, uh, and 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 now we're here, now we're here, but that's not that's not the question you asked. So I don't know. It was a great answer. Yeah, great answer. Thanks, Diva. <laughs> I think I think one of the coolest things about watching the show though evolve from Two River and like how I, like getting involved was straight up just an audition. It was like a regular audition, and I remember it. I tell the story however often I can. It's my favorite audition to date. Uh, for a multitude of reasons. Uh, the first one is I read the breakdown for the character and it said five foot four inches of teenage bully and I said, if I don't get this role, I should just quit acting for a minute. And secondly, 
when I went in there, I remember very vividly Stephen got up from the table and thanked me for my time, even before I did anything, and like basically humanized the situation, which doesn't happen often in auditions. Uh, it's a lot of separation, a lot of them behind the table and you performing, and it felt immediately like he wants me to give my best self to the audition. And uh, from that moment, the entire room was like smiling at me, and it was pretty great to feel that way, and it felt um, sort of like perfect, you know? It was one of those perfect auditions. And so watching it grow from that moment, and then watching like Katie's performance, and Lauren's performance, and George's performance, and Stephanie's performance grow, like, to now, it has been such an amazing thing to watch, because everyone has nuanced it a little bit with every version. And uh, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty incredible to watch that change. Yeah, I'll say I had a really similar audition experience as to, to Gerard, so I won't go into that too much, but like, you guys are amazing in a room. Um, but um, doing the show in Two River immediately felt really kind of special and different. Um, you know, um, Red Bank is a wonderful city, and um, but you know, it's, it's, it's also a small regional like place to do a, a, a show. The house. So the fact that it was, yeah, it was, um, we had like people coming back over and over who we could kind of like clock while doing the show who were like singing along with the show to songs that didn't exist outside of that room. Yeah. So it was kind of already mind blowing, and it never felt quite done. Like we really fell in love with it and it felt like just explosions of love and joy at every turn like from between the audience and ourselves and um, I mean maybe that's just like the optimistic side of my brain but it just never felt like the be more chill chapter of our lives was closed and I was right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean to counter that a little bit it felt like once it ended since there was no traction it was like, oh man, this thing is so good. At least we get a cast album. And at least somebody will listen to it. What was it like to start noticing the following for the cast album and the following for the show on the internet in the coming years afterward? Well, I um, historically live under a rock. It's a nice, cozy rock. Um, there's lots of plants there. Um, no, they do live under a rock. And um, so, you know, I, I remember waking up one morning and being like, oh, yeah, oh, there are people tagging me in like pictures of myself that are animated. <laughs> What's going on? And it started, you know, we, like I feel like everyone in the cast started feeling or noticing this trend of like all this fan art and, and you know, things like that. And I think the first time that I really, really, really realized it was um, at the stage door for SpongeBob. It was my first ever Broadway show, first ever stage door experience. And I like walked out and it was the winter time and there was this mom and her child and they were like, Christine! <laughs> and I was like, what is going on? And they're like, we love you and be more chill. And I'm like, did you see it in New Jersey? <laughs> like, what's going on? Um, and so it was like starting to meet those people in person and to have people flocking. I know people were doing concerts, other shows, people flocking to these other productions that we were working on based on the work that they had heard of ours on the, the album that was like really like witnessing, oh my gosh, this is beyond the internet. This is like real people in real life that are really passionate about this show from different countries, too. Like, we had people flying in from Australia, and then, to be, it, was, it was insane to see, like, Groundhog Day, which I did for, like, a year, not even a year, like, four or six months, yeah, yeah, but it was great, like, that was, that was surreal, man. It's totally, totally surreal. Um, I should just say quickly, at the end of this, we are gonna have some audience questions, so tweet your questions to hashtag BeWayConChill. At the end, we'll have some of those. George Salazar, you were gonna say something. Yeah, you know, what's really cool was, like, um, uh, this was all kind of going down. I was in Connecticut doing a play with two <laughs> I love how regional I love it. Um, uh, but I, I was in uh, Connecticut and, uh, and I was doing a play with two uh, uh, old women. It was just the three of us. And so there was, I had a lot of time on my hands. And I, I would have conversations with Joe about like, uh, 
you know, this is insane, this is nuts. And then we, we, we all kind of watched this cast album that, that uh, to this day, is so grateful for the people at Ghost Light Records for like immortalizing our show. But like we watched the album and it's like 92nd or 93rd week, uh, um, get up to the top 10 on, on, the, on the, uh, the soundtrack charts. And so it was like, you know, I think we were all like super aware that like this is a, this was a very unprecedented, like special thing that was happening. And I think we all felt the plates beneath us in the ground like start to shake and shift. And uh, you know, th there's a, there was a really crazy moment and, and, and this is kind of what you were talking about, but like, you know, when, you're, when, when, when the popularity of the show was kind of sh beginning, it, it existed in the, in, our, in the palm of our hands. It was just in our, in our phones. And so then like um, uh, seeing, still to this day, like seeing all of you here, it's super overwhelming because it's like, seeing it in person is way different from like looking at numbers on a on a phone um but it uh no it was it was a, it was a completely unreal thing and it was also this thing where like so many of us were like okay well how, what do we do next like how do we get to do this show again because clearly there's a hunger and a thirst for it um and uh and we need to do it and and so here we are <laughs> For the half of the cast who joined the company off Broadway at the Signature, um, some of you have collaborated with Joe and with the family for years, and some of you were brand new. What was the experience like of coming to Be More Chill at that point? Um, if I, it was uh, the best thing ever uh, for me. I mean, it was truly, um, you know, I, uh, when I, as I looked down the, the row at these people, um, I have like many varied relationships with all of them. Uh, and so when, when the opportunity came, when Joey Thomas called me on my birthday um, and, and offered me this show, uh, it was uh, like, like earth shattering. Uh, because what George was saying, you know, you felt the place shifting beneath you. It felt like, you know, a year and a half ago, I guess at this point, like it felt like the world was getting bigger. I mean, you know, I, I know, Truth, all these people, we've all known each other a long time. We've all been fans of each other, and we have like our our friends who are also our fans, and we all go to each other's shows, and it's like, oh great, here we are, the like hundred or so of us who all love each other, and I and I went to go see it at Two River twice, um, and and so it was like, oh that's that's us, and then last summer it felt like, oh suddenly us is more of us, and and it was this sort of the the, the world just got larger. And then to sort of drop into a show in the middle of all that uh, was like was insane. I mean, it was like the Signature Center had never seen the stage doors like we like we and you all brought to the Signature Center. They truly were like, "What's going on here?" And they were like, "We've had Sutton Foster before. We're ready for this." And we're like, "You're not ready." Be more chill as the new Sutton Foster. You heard it from the world. <laughs> and now we'll roll it. We'll sing "Gimme Gimme." <laughs> I do, I do. I do too. Next year, Yeltsin has. As one of the newer people to the company, um, I knew a lot of these people had deep, deep roots and they had really evolved relationships and they, you know, had inside jokes and things like that. So I was sort of afraid that I would not be accepted or I would feel out like an outsider for the majority of the time. But it was the exact opposite. Everyone embraced me as a new person and I'm no longer new, I'm just family, like everybody up here, uh, we show each other love and, and it's very genuine on and off stage. And that was the, the, the most pleasant part about joining, you know, something that had already evolved and it's gotten so big, um, is that I got gained some new family members. Yeah, I had a unique experience because I had done an earlier reading of, of Be More Chill before the Two River production as Mr. Here. And as life happens, I wasn't in the, in the Two River production, but I was always such a huge fan of the show, and I've known Joe um, for, for almost 15 years now, and, and he's like, my bestie. And, and so as the show became popular from the Two River uh, recording, you know, we would be hanging out and we'd be like, man, this thing is starting to catch fire in this crazy way. And to see him to start get excited and be like, how do I translate the, the numbers that I see on Spotify and all these, these, these internet um, venues into like a production? How do, I, how do I like make this happen? And I remember we were at a bar one night and I said, listen man, 
I'm so happy that it looks like Be More Chill might happen again, and I really, really want to be part of it. And I will do anything I have to do to be part of it. Um, and as fate would have it, uh, it worked out that I'm here. Uh, but I've known many of these people for years, and so it does feel like coming home, um, even though it was like a new situation, these guys had done the show already, it felt like coming home to something. Um, and you know, bringing uh, new family members into the fold, and it's a very special situation. Um, one of the most special things about our show does feel like it's been the, the fans and like this love for the show that people have. Um, do you have a favorite story about having any experience with the fandom at Signature or elsewhere? And also, what is it that you think they're responding to so strongly? Can I take this one? Okay. Um, I am from Dallas, Texas, and when my mom found out that I was gay, it really broke her heart and she didn't know how to deal with it. And I vowed, I've always just been like, from a child, I knew I was gonna be gay, I knew I was gonna be married, I knew I was gonna be a bro. I just had like a lot of young, early confidence, you know? Um, and I, I told myself as I was, you know, in this career, I don't wanna shy away from any part of me. If I'm gonna be a leading man, people are gonna know that I'm gay and married. And this was the first show that I was in that that dream was affirmed. I got a letter from, I think her name was Maddie. If you're here tonight, Maddie, I'm sorry, I remember your name. I think her name was Maddie. She drew a picture of me and my husband, and it was just like, I think you are wonderful. Thank you for being you. You guys are beautiful together. And just affirm that if you stay in line, it'll all happen just the way it's meant to happen. And it, that was like a good thing for me to feel as, a, as an adult in this industry that like all of me was affirmed in this beautiful, crazy show about being more chill. Yeah, I think, I think the show, sorry, Lauren, go ahead. Uh, no, it's okay. No, oh no, no, I'm serious. No. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think, I mean, I think we talk about this constantly, but I think Be More Chill really, really, like, the ultimate message is, like, it's okay to be different, like, and that, that's really cool, and um, it's okay to have problems because everybody does, um, and I think, like, this is actually something I wasn't even going to think about talking about tonight, but... Um, I had like a really tough year, all my hair fell out, I have alopecia, blah, 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 it's a whole thing. But what I wasn't expecting from the fandom, um, and this was like really recent, last year, I wasn't expecting um, the fans to kind of like <laughs> heal me a little bit. Um, and like the love that they gave at that stage door and everyone kind of being like, I'm this, I'm this, I have this, I have this. And it's like, it was, it was amazing. Um, and it was everybody celebrating everything that was so different about them and being so, so excited to say like, this is what makes me weird. And this is what, this is what makes me upset that it's okay because I'm here. Um, and I just, I wasn't expecting that. That's never something I thought like would happen uh, with the show and oh my god I cry all the time all the, all the time. George are you crying too I'm holding it in I know. obviously same um, it was just crazy to have what I feel like our show our show puts out reflected that so clearly at me um, and uh, and help me which is so silly but so thank you for that but also I really I know and I hope we're doing that too. That's anything but silly, but that's not silly. It's not silly. It's not it's what beautiful. I was gonna come and like talk it's not about silly at all. tonight. It's, it's beautiful. But, you know. Um, I will say something that's really cool about the fandom too is I've had several people come up to us at the, at the stage door and say that they made friends through the fandom. Yeah. Like people who had literally met for the first time at the stage door, like y'all you, you met in like chat rooms and message boards. And they're like, I am awkward in real life and I want to talk about being more chill. And then you like, you decide to meet <laughs> at the show. And that's like, we're best friends and we're just meeting now for the first time. She's from Pennsylvania, she's from Canada, she's from Florida, and it's like, <laughs> It's mind blowing. Like you guys find each other. It's, it's wild. I, I I love that. I love that. Aspect. I don't know if anyone wants to speak on the parents or the families and stuff too, because that's a pretty amazing thing. I don't want to take up too much talking time if anyone wants to speak before, but that is an amazing thing. Watching parents who 
brought their kids to see our show and then ended up loving our show because of the experience they had with their kids and also because the show is so great. Exactly. Yeah, that's good. Um, I want to ask, one of my favorite things about our show is how supportive everyone is during performances. Like, I've seen so many of you watch each other from the wings during moments you've seen so many times. Um, obviously, a lot of people have seen it, some people haven't. Can you talk about any favorite moment you have either to perform in the show, to watch if you're a creative team member, or um, to watch in the wings if you're a cast member? I, I have one. Um, I, uh, when, when, when Loser Geek Whatever became part of the show, uh, off Broadway, it was obviously new to to the world, and I was so excited to see how people would react to the song because I, I love the song and I love Will's performance of it. And so, I mean, every <laughs> performance, literally every performance, I stood backstage and watched Will do the thing, and then I would like scan to the audience in his underwear, <laughs> in my underwear, in the whole time in my underwear. Um, that's true, actually. That's true. Um, <laughs> Um, no, but just just to see the reactions of, of people that knew the music so well already and that were so excited and shocked and taken aback by this new song that they had never heard that I think actually is, is, a, is a crucial part of the show now. Um, I mean, I enjoyed that every single night and, and shed many a tear back there watching Will do it. I'm like watching Jason Tanner. <laughs> Honestly, say do anything exactly. Tell me more. Watching with Jason Tam uh, every night. Uh, Jason and I, uh, we would get ready to enter after uh, the smartphone hour. Um, and I would say by the end of the off Broadway run, we knew like most of the choreography. Yeah, like ninety percent. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. What was your nickname backstage before you entered the show? Oh, my nickname was Ghost Cat. I have 35 minutes uh, that I'm not in the, the first 35 minutes of the show. And so I would just basically like take naps under countertops and like, and just kind of generally roam the like weird backstage hallways of, of uh, uh, all white. In all white, outrageous really all white outfits. And so they nicknamed me Ghost Cat and I like it. <laughs> All of the boys shared a dressing room uh, off Broadway, and it, he's not lying. I would go in before a half hour to just kind of say hi, and I'd be like, "Where's Dan?" And he'd be like, lying under that couch right there. It, it was a safe space. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the rest of us are just loud and yelling and singing. Uh, for Joe and Joe and Steven, uh, we have informally referred to the Off-Broadway Run as 2.0 and the Broadway Run as 3.0. What has it been like to return to this material and how do you feel about working on it on these next steps now? I mean, the best thing every time we work on it is we get to know these characters better and better. You know, I mean, the whole show was an active collaboration between every actor who played these parts in workshops, in, you know, in the tour production, this production. You know, and every chance we get to work on the show is a chance to dig deeper, you know, and, and get to expose a little more of who these people are, what matters to them. The show's a big, fun sci-fi comedy, but the core of it is the human beings who are fumbling, you know, for a sense of self and identity. Um, and, uh, and every time we get to work on it, you know, we get to dig a little deeper, a little deeper, and, you know, through, you know, conversations with the cast, you know, through the workshops we do, you know, we'd have, and, you know, through conversations with fans who, you know, are so smart at picking up you know, the beating heart of who these people are, um, you know, getting a chance to, to, to discover those layers together. So I'm so excited for people to see 3.0 and see how that work has continued, especially people who might have seen it off Broadway or only know the album, uh, to get to like know these people a little more. Yeah, it's a real pleasure to work with a group of artists who are never satisfied. <laughs> right? Like, we, we have a real curiosity about how can we keep making it better? How can we keep making it richer? How can we keep providing entry points for an audience to feel as much as possible with this show? And it's really amazing to be working with a group of collaborators who are really up for that challenge and really pouring themselves into making it better and better and better. So that's a real thrill. I think it might be also important to note, piggyback off of what you just said about how we take into consideration what the fans are saying. Like, there's a lot of things that happen in the fan art and the, the stuff that was like being written or just things that they exuded on social media about the characters that like 
influenced them in a positive way. Like, for instance, people kept drawing Rich with a red streak in his hair when we were at Two River, after Two River, before we transferred to Off-Broadway, and I was like, I guess we should just put a red streak in my hair then, huh? Like, truly, those little, the, yeah, 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 because in the book, he has a red streak, and like, off, like, you know, at Two River, we were like, we only have so much time to do this much stuff. So when we had the time to really focus on that, I was like, yeah, let's see what that does. And like, honestly, everyone was like, red streak! Like, it actually made a difference. But that's the thing, like, I've never seen a, a, a show do that before, actually listen to everyone. Yeah, I'm obsessed with fan, and then, you know, for me growing up, you know, finding people who like the same weird things I liked, whether it was musicals or comic books or sci-fi, and, you know, I would find those communities online. So, you know, when we were doing Be More Chill in New Jersey, I, I would always joke and be like, you know, oh, but the fan fiction would pick up on this, or like, you know, I, I feel like I was the first person to, like, have, like, fan headcanons for the characters, even though I also, like, wrote them with Joe. Um, so, so, like, when there started actually being fan art, fan characters, I would start off, like, when I'd see it, I'd send it to Joe, but soon there was, like, so much that I just couldn't send it. I would, like, couldn't read it. It's just, like, a tidal wave. But, you know, what, I, what was so moving about that is because when people would, you know, I love creating something that inspires other people to create, and when people would, you know, take these characters we all made together and tell their own stories with them or, or depict them in, in, in their own art, what they were picking up on is, is the same things that mattered to us, which is like what was so weird and interesting and different and, and iconic about these people. And, how, you know, they felt, the fact that these characters felt as real to the fans as it was to all of us when we created them together, you know, was felt really, really special. And that was when I, you know, I, I think it's one of my most proud moments as an artist is to feel like I had that shared with that people. Uh, it's been very well documented how unique our trajectory is to Broadway, um, but one of the other things I think makes our show unique is uh, because there's this foundation of family and so many long-term collaborations, it feels like the bass player is as important as the leading actor, as important as the intern. It really just feels like that vibe. I feel like there are so many things about our show that are unique. Um, you've already, a lot of you have touched on this, but are there things that feel different about Be More Chill than other shows you've worked on in different ways? The, oh, the other day, uh, while we were having rehearsal, Katie made sort of a, a joke in the air. She was like, how will they tell us apart? And it's because there's so much diversity in this show that I haven't seen in a very long time on a Broadway stage. You, There is no one who is built alike, looks alike, comes from the same background. We all find things that we have in common that can bring us together as a community, but we all come from everywhere and everything and look like everybody. And I, I'm just so proud to be a part of a piece of art that is like that. You know, uh, Joe, Trace, and I had a, a, a we were crying. Uh, we were talking about how this show has kind of uh, clarified our mission statements as artists. And kind of going back to what you said is like, learning through this show that um, that the art we create can have a very positive effect and impact on, on you, specifically with this with this show, on young people. Like, I came out of the closet when I was, to my father when I was 30 years old. This was two years ago. And um, at the stage doors uh, off Broadway, I met so many young people who knew so much about themselves and were so unapologetically them, and were just doing them and being themselves and being proud of themselves. And it, um, it's, it's mind blowing to be a part of something that started as um, an amazing summer in New Jersey that has now become this thing that has helped people break out of their shells and own who they are. And so it's um, it's interesting now going beyond Be More Chill, like we talked about like the kind of things that we want to spend our like lives working on and 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 it's been it's become clear to us because of this show and because of you that like the things we want to create. Are, are hopefully things that are gonna like, you know, uh, help and, 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 and kind of impact um, society, whether it's like on a scale like this or on a Broadway stage, you know? Well, I think what, oh, yes, clap for that. If you clap for the state of Connecticut, we should clap for yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
to build up Connecticut here. Connecticut gets enough praise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah a lot of Welcome rich people live in Connecticut. But the water is nice. The, the water is nice there. Anyway, okay. But so in the context of, I feel like this, you know, what a Broadway con and the uh, a weekend full of conversations around the Broadway industry and. Uh, yeah, the Broadway industry. I think what's really special and what was really affirming for me about this show and its trajectory is that in the cheesiest way, it's like, oh, love can win. Like, love does win, actually. And I find that so often times I meet um, creatives and artists who, you know, you come to New York and you have all these visions and the business is really hard and there's a lot, there are a lot of people telling you no. And, but if you, if you really, really continue to check in with that core center of yourself of why you want to make work to begin with, then like there are realities like this one in which it can happen. I mean, it, it's not every day that this specific trajectory happens, but I feel like it's such a win for the entire community, both artistically and the budding artists, because it's like, yeah, just trust, like that's possible, and and that can take you so far and so deep, and and help you arrive in the higher echelons of commercial theater in 2019 with the people that you love most. And I think that, um, yeah, that is something I love about our trajectory. <laughs> it's also changing commercial theater. This is commercial theater, and it was created from the internet which is like a whole new thing that we haven't been able to achieve, which we didn't know we were able to achieve. And it sort of goes into our show. Our show is about technology. Technology helped our show. It's very strange how all the stars line up like that. I think that from the top down, we've just been put in a position to have a unique experience. Um, um, being in a Broadway show is stressful for everybody. Like, it's a miracle for it to happen, and it's crazy for the creatives, for the house staff, for the producers. And in this particular situation with Be More Chill, I feel like everyone leads with love from Stephen Brackett to you to like, I can go up to our writer and say, hey man, I'm feeling this, and he's not gonna be like, shut the hell up, say what I said. You know, that's unique, like that is, we're all validated constantly, and we're taken care of constantly, and I've never been abused in a show, but but most of the time, I know that I have a place, and that place is in a box, and I have to speak a certain way to my director, or I have to speak a certain way to my producers, and here, I feel like I can really just be my full self, and that is unique, and I hope it's a reflection and, and a model for shows to come, because this happens because what happens at the top happens, and we have a good setup. What was it like to learn the show was going to Broadway? I wept. I wept. I wept like a child. You wept in a bathtub. I wept in a bathtub. Yeah, well, first I wept in the middle of a circle of people. Um, yeah, true. We're all friends on the internet. Um, and then, then I climbed into the, the, the famous crying bathtub. And um, I called my mom. I called my mom. And then I got an email from Stephen Brackett the next day that was like, you were in the bathtub. So, and that's why I didn't say anything to you. You looked busy. Uh, and it, it was, um, it, it was the, the greatest thing in the world. Uh, you know, so it's similar to what we've, we've been talking about, what makes the show unique and different. Um, you are often told in various settings, uh, yes, you should be uh, talented, yes, you should work hard, uh, but always, you know, the person who is nice to, you know, who is a pleasure to work with and who is kind is going to get the job over some talented jerk. And you're told this very often, and you, uh, not often, but like often enough, see evidence to the contrary. And you're like, oh, is that really true? I don't know. If it's, I don't know if I believe it. I'm gonna keep repeating it because I want it to be true. Um, but this process makes that feel very damn true. Um, it makes it feel like you can sort of stick to your guns and stick with your people, uh, like the people you love and the things you love. Uh, you know, the art that you love, uh, and if you if you really do work hard and really are nice to people, uh, then like it, it really can happen like you always hoped it would happen. Um, and so with the day that we were told we are going to Broadway was like truly sort of mind-altering for me in terms of like how it can happen. 
One of my, oh, sorry, clap for, yes. Yay. Yay. Mind blown, it all turned. Um, one of my favorite things about finding out about Broadway in that moment and like those, that we had to do a whole show right after that, which was insane. Like everyone's like spontaneously crying backstage. And, like, oh yeah, but we weren't allowed to tell anyone that we knew. Oh yeah, so it was all like, like that stage door, everyone was just like about to explode inside. Like, two but weeks. one of my favorite things was like, this is my Broadway debut. And it's, it's several of our Broadway debut. Yeah, raise your hand if it's your Broadway debut. Woo! many a time, being as emotional and as excited as <laughs> I was, I was like, oh, okay, this is as big of a deal as I want it to be, you know what I mean? Like, everyone is so just straight psyched about all this, and it was just like very affirming. It's not just like, okay, this is your turn, and now it'll be someone else's turn. Well, it's it's just, it was just, everyone was, cry, 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 floor, floor, floor. Like, it was it's right. just the first time it, you know, like, I mean, I can only speak on, you know, for, for us, it's like, it's like the first time in my professional life that I truly felt like I gave my all to something and it was accepted. It wasn't stifled, it wasn't stopped, it wasn't, it wasn't hindered. It's exactly a collaboration and that does not happen so often on Broadway. It doesn't happen so often off Broadway or in readings or workshops. In fact, it happens this much in a lifetime in professional theater. And everyone wants to believe that it's a collaboration, but truly this situation is a collaboration. Everything we have created has been together and it's been talked about. Yeah, we've disagreed. We've, we've said like, I'll try something and then they'll be like, mm, absolutely not. Uh, and that's fine, man. You just want to build the best product. And that is why, because it feels like we gave our all to it. It doesn't feel like a job. It feels like, oh, this is a historical moment in our lives that we have to seize and now really service and do it correctly because there's a lot of things and a lot of people that are counting on it. And it's like, that doesn't happen, man. That does not happen. It's not just a Broadway show. It's be more chill. It is a very special thing. Here's a quick fun fact. Jen Tepper told us that we had an automation rehearsal yeah. Yeah. to get everybody to, you know, have this meeting beforehand without actually telling us that we were going Broadway. And it worked. It worked. They told us, like, you know, before our day off, for the most part. And, and I didn't even really think about it until I was at the theater the day of, like, about to have our automation rehearsal. Because one of the portals is automated and they needed to, you know, apparently, like, fix the timing of the cues, which it, it made sense. Until I saw Jen Temper walk by me in a full rent the runway yes. pink ball <laughs> gown. And then I was like, this is not. Yeah. That's the first thing you said to me though. I walked into the dressing room, you were the only one in there. Yeah. You were like I was sleeping under the under the <laughs> It was also suspicious that there was a tripod being set up literally yeah. in the way of the thing we were rehearsing automation for. Yeah. Yeah. I've been thinking about this a lot lately, and it feels appropriate for Broadway Con. Um, I am, this Broadway season is going to be so incredible, and I'm so honored that we get to be a part of it. And I think growing up, I, I didn't grow up really around theater, and when I went to college, I just wanted to do experimental theater and contact improv for the rest of my life. Um, and I was always like, oh, you know, Broadway, yeah, they're gonna do like another production of Annie, like Annie's great, that's fine. Um, and I just never felt excited about Broadway. And I recently had this deep, very uh, profound revelation that Broadway is so, when done right, and with like really art, uh, artistic um, voice and push pull challenging the current uh, world we live in, when, when, when artists' work are really being put up on Broadway stages, it is perhaps like one of the most important things that we have in this country. Because we do a show on Broadway and then people from all over the world come to see Broadway shows and then they take those shows that are on Broadway stages and they do it at their community theaters, they do it all around the world, they start, you know, that's the, that's the canon, right? That's the canon of work that people share. 
And so I feel like so humbled to be able to be this little engine that could in this like bad ass Broadway season. Cause it feels like this is what Broadway's about, you know? Like it's very exciting and, and um, it's also really great that this show was thinking about young people and, and theater, like most of people's first introduction to the performing arts is through theater of some sort, whether it's like improv after school or theater program after school or theater class. And to do a show that revolves around young people that is so close to home and being able to offer those words to, to you all that feels very like, very uh, rich and not having you play like a 70 year old man, <laughs> very rich. Um, that's very powerful because those are the words that you you say like five times a week at your high school and that that's empowering you also. That's like a transfer of, of artistic energy. I have so to say, I'm going to that. I'm still here. I'll have to say, on this very stage at the first Broadway con several years ago, I don't know, was anyone at the first Broadway con? Yeah. <laughs> um, there was a crazy snowstorm. A lot of people couldn't make it here. There was an impromptu Chris Rodriguez concert on this stage. Our friend and family member, Chris Rodriguez, and, um, and someone ran up to Joe and was like, oh my God, can you play Broadway Here I Come? And he ran on stage and played it for her. She had him rehearsed it. She sang it. It was amazing. It was in this room. And I remember people coming up to me that night, and I always feel like this when that very complicated anthem of Joe Iconis is sung, is like, we're gonna get there, we're gonna get to Broadway, we're gonna make it happen, and like, it's full start, we're doing this. Um, this is happening, Broadway, February 13th, first preview, get your tickets if you haven't already. Um, how, what are you most excited about, about what's gonna happen at the Lyceum? How are you feeling about what's next, and what are you most looking forward to? I'm, oh, go, go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, no, I'm, I'm, I'm specifically excited that our uh, that our show, which is so um, feels so current and feels so um, you know people like call it contemporary and and and, and edgy and, and all those sort of things. Uh, it feels so now, right? Be more chill. I love that it's I love that it's existing in the oldest continually operating theater on Broadway. You know this idea of like our like you know crazy. Um, sci-fi, you know, musical uh, comedy that's like gleaming and candy colored um, and very slick looking is gonna be in this like gorgeous old theater. And to me, it's so, um, it so speaks to the, the kind of soul of Be More Chill because as much as Be More Chill is this, you know, this thing that, that deals with, you know, technology and, and issues of modern society, it is in its uh, bones a really classic musical comedy. You know, I, I'm someone who grew up um, and continue to be just a total theater geek and I you know only listen to cast albums until I was in college and um, and all, my my songwriting is very much rooted in like traditional musical theater songwriting um, and you know it's the the it, it, it sounds new and it sounds like it's you know music for 2019 but it's really like it's like classic stuff and so I love that like Be More Chill is finally getting to be in this home that's you know the the sort of as, as, as classic and like old school as you can get and so I'm super excited to see that happen. I'm excited about seeing how beneficial the show has been for the people that have already seen it or who haven't even already seen it but have heard uh, the music on the internet. Uh, it has created, people have talked about this, it has created friendships, uh, it has allowed uh, uh, parents to talk with their kids about issues that they didn't fully understand beforehand. It, it, um, I'm excited to see that spread to a wider audience because I want to have a, a world full of an army of people that are inclusive and people that are authentic and people that are leading from a place of warmth and love uh, and, uh, and celebrating what makes them unique. Uh, that's what I'm excited about. So says the slip. <laughs> I'm excited for my parents to see it. <laughs> I am. No, I mean, it is. Um, it is a. Uh, uh, it's a. It's a special day. I think it, it ties back to you know you're saying like you know Charlie's been on Broadway like seven thousand times at this point. Um, but it's like never not Broadway. It's like never not you know when I was like in fourth grade and went to see Cats. Uh, and I was like, wow, that's incredible. 
And then like that sort of became like, that's a thing I want to do. Um, and my parents have been truly the most supportive people uh, in the entire world. I don't think anyone has more supportive parents than I do. Clap for them, they're great. They are the Romans, guys. And, uh, and the Romans are great. They supported not just me, but many of the people on this stage and many of the people in our show and in our world. Um, and I'm excited for like my parents to see all our kids up there. <laughs> I'm um I'm excited to watch uh when we found out about Broadway I uh I like went into shock and then I started crying because I looked around and knew about all of these Broadway debuts that were going to be happening and so you know um I you know these three creative hearts and minds I am obsessed with and love so much and to watch them make their debuts and to watch Lauren Marcus and Jason Sweet Tooth Williams and Katie Carlson. Um, and me, because uh, I just graduated high school um, two years ago. Uh, no, it's, it's really thrilling to, to, to watch um, people that I love uh, so much uh, and who I respect so much and who work so, so hard uh, to get to watch them make their debuts um, with this show in particular um, is, uh, makes my heart uh, explode with rainbows and smiley face emojis. It's one of those, It's just one of those moments you don't take for granted. And no matter how many Broadway shows one does, or no matter how many great experiences you have, this experience right here is so special because it has truly been driven by the love of everyone who's been impacted by it, not just us, because we are very impacted by it, clearly, but everyone who has heard it or seen it or even just heard about it and was interested in it. Truly, we are only here because of that and that is so exciting to be able to then translate that to thousands of people a week. Are you kidding me? That is that is so unbelievable that this show that we thought was so special and so good and almost like too good for Broadway, you know what I mean? Like it, it's like it's like, oh man, this is like too much of the dream. The dream is happening and it's happening and we are not gonna do it incorrectly. I can guarantee you that. No, no. Britain uh, might. Britain might. <laughs> I hope it's doing great. Yeah, I do a show. Um, <laughs> I'm really excited to. I'm a family person, so I like being around cool, smart, funny, complicated, weird, crazy people a lot. So it's nice to be around these people and to not have that go away soon. Because I feel like there's a lot that we can learn from each other. There's a lot that I can bring to the theater and be like, oh, this is how I'm feeling. And there will be somebody out of these 13 who will listen. And that's cool. Yeah. You know, um, as, a, as a theater maker, we do this for audience, right? We make hoping that we can reach and find an audience. And sometimes that doesn't happen, right? To the extent that you want it to. What's been so thrilling about this has been actually seeing that we have reached an audience and that we found a tribe of people. I think what I'm most excited about for Broadway is opening up those doors even further and hoping to find a broader audience, hoping to find more people who might have not have been exposed to the soundtrack, who might have heard of it, might not have, but I'm really, really excited to just open our doors as wide as possible. I like there's gonna be people who can't get tickets to Hamilton who will come to our show. <laughs> and, like, and like maybe maybe there's even gonna be like like three or four people that will think that they bought tickets to Hamilton, but they didn't. They accidentally bought them to our show. And imagine like what a thrill it will be for those people. That's all. Um, a lot I will just say because I literally just met Anthony Rapp backstage and I was such a redhead growing up, I told, and I was like exploding inside truly. Really. And like just the idea that our show might be somebody's rent is like <laughs> absolutely insane to me. And then I get to be in that show. That's wild! You're not just in it, you're probably now on time to get. Um, we have a couple moments left. Is there anything else anyone would want to add? Anything at all? We love you, Jen. I love you, Gerard. Yeah, Jen Tepper is freaking <laughs> awesome. You all should all clap right now for Jen Tepper. Because she, she really holds it down for us. The silent hero.
Thanks, you guys. That's not what I was asking for. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, anyway, you've heard it all here. Be more shellmusical.com. February 13th is our first preview at the Lyceum. Um, I'm hoping some audience questions pop up when this countdown ends. Do you think they will? Broadway Con? That's what that countdown is for? Oh, great. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm just going to read the question. Stephanie Shue. Stephanie Shue. Thank you so much. Uh, who, who breaks character the most often? Oh my god, it's me! I really have 14 seconds left. I'm so embarrassed. I'm the worst actor. No, it's true. I giggle all the time. I have to act with Britain, and I love him so much. And sometimes he forgets lines, and then I giggle. Somebody coughed one day off Broadway. We were on the couch. It's a very dramatic scene in the second act where I like, really bare my soul. And somebody like this far away is like, <laughs> 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 <laugh